Did you know that a cable tray is not considered a raceway? Can a 38 square MTHHN be installed in a cable tray? Hello everyone. Today, we will be discussing Article 392. In this video, we will cover the basic types of cable trays, what is permitted and prohibited for use, and the requirements for installation as outlined in sections 392.1 to 392.12. Let's dive right into our discussion. Section 392.1. Scope. This article covers cable tray systems, including ladder, ventilated trough, ventilated channel, solid bottom, and other similar structures. Cable tray systems are essential components in electrical and communication installations, providing support and organization for cables while facilitating easy installation, maintenance, and future upgrades. Among the various types of cable trays, the ladder cable tray is notable for its design, which consists of two side rails connected by rungs, resembling a ladder. This structure is ideal for heavy cables and allows for good airflow, thereby reducing heat buildup. Another type is the ventilated trough, which features ventilated sides and sometimes a solid bottom, making it suitable for environments where cable heat dissipation is a concern. Similarly, the ventilated channel is a narrower option that is often used for smaller cable counts and is best for light-duty applications requiring some airflow. In contrast, the solid bottom tray provides maximum protection for cables due to its completely enclosed design, making it ideal for areas exposed to environmental hazards such as moisture or dust. Additionally, there are various other structures, including custom or specialized trays that can be tailored for unique installations needing specific cable management solutions. The benefits of cable tray systems include improved organization, protection from physical damage and environmental factors, and flexibility for easy modifications and expansions in cable installations. Ultimately, choosing the right cable tray system depends on the type of cables being used, the installation environment, and specific project requirements, ensuring efficiency, safety, and longevity of the cable infrastructure. The code defines cable tray system as a unit or assembly of units or sections and associated fittings forming a rigid structural system used to securely fasten or support cables and raceways. This definition underscores the primary function of cable trays as mechanical support systems and not raceways. To further clarify this distinction, it's important to examine the definition of a raceway found in Article 100. A raceway is defined an enclosed channel designed expressly for holding wires, cables, or bus bars, with additional functions as permitted in this code. The key difference lies in the structure and function of each system. Cable trays are typically open, allowing for easy access to cables for installation and maintenance, as well as permitting airflow to help dissipate heat. They are versatile and can accommodate a wide variety of cable types and sizes, making them ideal for large-scale installations in industrial and commercial settings. In contrast, raceways provide a more secure and protective environment for cables, often being used in residential or commercial applications where specific cable protection is necessary. Their enclosed nature can limit access, requiring additional effort to reach the cables inside. Where are the cable trays permitted to be used? Section 392.10 states that cable trays shall be permitted to be used as a support system for service conductors, feeders, branch circuits, communication circuits, control circuits, and signaling circuits. Cable tray installations shall not be limited to industrial establishments. Where exposed to direct rays of the sun, insulated conductors and jacketed cables shall be identified as being sunlight resistant. Cable trays and their associated fittings shall be identified for the intended use. Cable trays are versatile support systems that are permitted for use in a variety of applications, as specified in section 392.10. This section outlines that cable trays can be utilized to support service conductors, feeders, branch circuits, communication circuits, control circuits, and signaling circuits. This broad range of applications highlights the flexibility of cable trays in managing different types of electrical and communication systems. Importantly, the use of cable trays is not confined to industrial environments. They can also be effectively implemented in commercial buildings, institutional facilities, and residential settings, making them suitable for diverse installation scenarios. This versatility allows for efficient cable management across various sectors, ensuring that cables are safely and effectively organized. When cable trays are exposed to direct sunlight, there are specific requirements to ensure the longevity and safety of the cables they support. Insulated conductors and jacketed cables in these situations must be labeled as sunlight resistant, indicating that they are designed to withstand the effects of UV radiation and temperature fluctuations. This precaution helps prevent degradation of the materials, ensuring reliable performance over time. 
Additionally, it is crucial for cable trays and their associated fittings to be clearly labeled according to their intended use. When cable trays are exposed to sunlight, the finishes applied should prioritize UV resistance and corrosion protection to guarantee long-term durability and effective functionality. Section 392.10a Wiring Methods The wiring methods in Table 392.10a shall be permitted to be installed in cable tray systems under the conditions described in their respective articles and sections. Table 392.10a provides a comprehensive list of wiring methods allowed for use with cable trays, detailing various types of cables and conduits along with their corresponding articles. Here's a summary of the entries. Armored cable, type AC. Communications cables. Electrical metallic tubing, type EMT. Fire alarm cables. Article. Flexible metallic tubing, type FMC. Liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit, type LFNC. Liquid tight flexible metallic conduit, type LFMC, metal clad cable, article, non-metallic sheathed cable, types NM, NMC, and NMS, article, power limited fire alarm cable, type MC cable, non-metallic sheathed cable, type UF, service entrance cable, type SE and USE metal cable trays can be utilized in areas designated for environmental air, plenums, to support only the recognized wiring methods allowed in these spaces. In this context, it is not the metal cable trays that impose limitations, but rather the specific cable or wiring method being used. Section 392.10b In industrial establishments, the wiring methods listed in Table 392.10a are allowed to be used in any industrial establishment, provided that the conditions specified in their respective articles are met. In these settings, where maintenance and supervision guarantee that only qualified personnel service the installed cable tray system, any of the cables outlined in 392.10b1 and b the 2nd of may be installed in the latter ventilated trough solid bottom or ventilated channel cable trays this section emphasizes the conditions under which specific wiring methods as outlined in table 392.10a are permitted in industrial environments in industrial settings there is often a higher level of supervision and maintenance ensuring that only qualified personnel handle the installed cable tray systems this is crucial for safety and compliance with electrical codes. Under these conditions, various cables referenced in sections 392.10b1 and b2 can be installed in different types of cable trays, such as ladders, ventilated trough, solid bottom, or ventilated channel cable trays. This flexibility allows for efficient and safe cable management in environments where trained professionals are responsible for overseeing the installation and maintenance. Section 392.10b1 is about single conductor cables that may be installed in accordance with B1A through B1C A. Single conductor cables must be 1 aught AWG or larger and must be of a type that is listed and marked on the surface for use in cable trays. When 1 aught AWG through 4 aught AWG single conductor cables are installed in ladder cable trays, the maximum allowable rung spacing for the ladder tray must be 225 mm 9 inches. A. Single conductor cables must be of a minimum size of 1 over 0 AWG or larger. These cables need to be specifically listed and marked for use in cable trays, which ensures they meet safety and performance standards. When 1 aught AWG to 4 aught AWG cables are installed in ladder cable trays, there is a regulation that the maximum spacing between rungs should not exceed 225 mm 9 inches. This requirement is designed to provide adequate support and stability for the cables, preventing sagging and potential damage. b. Welding cables must comply with the provisions outlined in Article 630, Part 4. When installing welding cable in a cable tray, Section 630.42 mandates that cable trays designated for welding cables must be exclusively used for this purpose. c. Single conductors used as equipment grounding conductors must be insulated, covered, or bare, and they must be 4 AWG or larger. Since equipment grounding conductors are generally smaller than circuit conductors and cannot exceed their size according to Article 250, this section permits a minimum size of 4 AWG to be installed in the cable tray. Section 392.10 B2 Single and multi-conductor medium voltage cables must be type MV cables. Single conductors should be installed in accordance with 392.10 B1. C. Hazardous. Classified. Areas. 
Cable trays located in hazardous, classified, areas may only contain the types of cables and raceways that are permitted by other articles in this code. Examples of how the hazardous location articles alter the general requirements can be seen in the wiring method stipulations in sections 501.10, 502.10, and 503.10. These sections restrict the wiring methods permissible in Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 locations to ensure maximum protection against physical damage. C. Non-metallic cable trays can be utilized in corrosive environments. This allows for the use of materials like fiberglass trays in industrial or other settings where harsh corrosive conditions could damage metal trays. Additionally, these trays are acceptable in areas where voltage isolation is necessary. E. Airfield lighting cable tray. In airports where maintenance and supervision guarantee that only qualified personnel can access, install, or service the cable, airfield lighting cables used in series circuits rated up to 5000 volts and powered by constant current regulators may be installed in cable trays. Informational note. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, Advisory Circulars acts, offer additional practices and methods for airport lighting. Where are cable trays not permitted to be used? Section 392.12 Use is not permitted. Cable tray systems must not be used in hoistways or in areas where they may be subjected to severe physical damage. Cable trays are not allowed in hoistways, which are vertical shafts used for the movement of elevators or lifts. This restriction is in place because hoistways experience dynamic forces and movements that can compromise the stability and safety of cable trays. The constant motion, potential vibrations, and other stresses in these environments can lead to damage or dislodgement of the trays and their contents. The regulation also states that cable trays should not be installed in areas where they are likely to face severe physical damage. This includes locations subject to impacts, heavy machinery operations, or any other conditions that could result in mechanical harm to the trays. Examples might include industrial settings with heavy equipment or locations where materials are frequently moved or dropped. 